let's use Prolog to study the Collatz conjecture. What is the Collatz conjecture? Let us first consider a simple operation of integers. Given a positive integer n, we do the following. If n is even, we divide it by 2. On the other hand, if n is odd, we triple it and add 1. So, in other words, we are talking about a function f of n that either halves n or computes 3 times n plus 1, depending on whether n is even or odd. Then, for any given positive integer, we consider the so-called hailstone sequence, which is simply the iterated application of this function f. So, for instance, if we start with 1, then 1 is clearly odd. So, the next integer is 3 times 1 plus 1, which is 4. Then 4 is even. So, the next integer is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And this is again even. So, the next integer is 2 divided by 2, which is 1. And now we are in a cycle. In this case, the next integer is again 4, then 2, and so on since the function is deterministic and it's clear that once we reach 1, we are in this cycle, 1, 4, 2 and so on. And once we reach 2 or 4, we are also in this cycle. So, as the next example, consider 3. 3 is odd, so the next integer is 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 10. 10 is even, so the next integer is 5. The next is 16, 8, 4. And now we know how it goes already. It goes 2, 1. And we're in the same cycle. And the Collatz conjecture states that no matter from which positive integer you start, you always eventually arrive at this cycle. So in other words, you always reach 1, no matter from where you start. So let's study this conjecture in Prolog. In Prolog, let us first describe a single step of this sequence. So, let us first describe the relation of some integer n0 and the next integer n. And since we are reasoning about integers, we use hash equals for declarative integer arithmetic. The predicate hash equals holds if a and b evaluate to the same integer. Here is a link with more information about this predicate. So, let us first consider a suitable name for this relation. And one suitable name would be, for example, integer next, because clearly we are talking about an integer and the next integer. However, this would be a bit overly general, because we are not talking about the next integer in an arithmetic sense, for example, but about the next integer in this hailstone sense or as it's more commonly known in this Collatz sense. So let us use the name Collatz next. And now let's think about the cases that make this predicate true. So basically there are only two possible cases, n0 being even and n0 being odd. And since these cases are disjoint, let us consider them in separate clauses. First, what about if n0 is even? What does it mean if n0 is even? This means that n0 is equal to 2 times some integer k. And what must hold in this case? In this case, the next integer n is just this integer k. Because clearly, if n0 is 2 times k, then k is n0 divided by 2, and we said that if n0 is even, then the next integer is n0 divided by 2, which is just this k. And when you see such a construction where simply two variables are equal, you can simply drop one of them and just use the other instead. So we can equivalently write this as n0 is equal to 2 times n. And this expresses everything we need to express, because if this holds, then n is simply the next integer after n0. So that was the case where n0 is even. Let's now consider the case n0 odd. What does it mean that n0 is odd? It means that n0 is equal to 2 times some integer k plus 1.
And in that case, the next integer n is three times n0 plus one, according to the specification of the function we mentioned above. And in fact, this k, we don't even care about this variable k, so we can simply replace it by an anonymous variable. And the definition is now complete. And we can use this predicate in all directions. For example, we can use it to compute the next integer in the sequence. For example, the next integer after 5 is 16. And we can also use it in other directions. For example, we can use it to ask what are predecessors of some integer. And in this case, we get two solutions and see that possible predecessors of 16 are 32 and 5. And we can also post the so-called most general query where we ask for any answers at all. Now, let us describe the whole hailstone sequence. Essentially, this is a reachability task. We're starting from some integer n0, go to the next integer n1, then n2, and so on. And for each successive pair of integers, this relation we have just defined, this collard's next predicate, must hold. So now we only have to describe in Prolog what it means for an integer to be reachable from some other integer. And this is quite easy to define in Prolog. For example, we can say if we are at some integer n, then we can reach n. And if we are at some integer n0, then we can reach another integer n if we can reach n1 from n0 in one step. So if collards next of n0 and n1 holds. And from there, if we can reach n from n1. So if collards reaches n1 and n holds. Because if these both hold, then we can reach n from n0. And that's all. We can now really study the Collatz conjecture by asking, for example, whether we can reach 1 if we start from 5. And we get true as answer, so we know this holds. And in fact, we get true redundantly and many, many times, and in fact, even arbitrarily often, because we know that once we have reached 1, we can always reach it again because we are, in the, we are in this cycle, one for two, one for two, and so on. So it makes sense that this doesn't simply just stop, but yields true arbitrarily many times. And more interestingly, we can also ask, which integers can we reach? And in this case, we get the concrete solutions. So if we start at five, we can reach five, of course, and we can reach 16 as the next integer. We can reach 8 by the twofold application of this function f. We can reach 4, 2, 1, and so on. And from there, we already know that we are again in this cycle 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 2. And maybe even more remarkably, we can now post additional constraints and ask, for example, can we reach some integer n that is greater than 12? if we start from five. And we get suitable solutions also in this case. And note that we didn't even have to modify this relation in any way. We can now simply add additional constraints to the query and this also works. So what about the actual Collatz conjecture? Now, the Collatz conjecture is a statement about all positive integers. And of course we can't really try it for all positive integers because there are infinitely many of them. But we can at least try the conjecture on any concrete integer and also for arbitrarily many of them. And one way to do this in Prolog is to use its built-in backtracking mechanism to generate positive integers. So for example, this particular goal will generate a solutions n0 is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on on backtracking. And for each of these concrete solutions, we can ask whether we reach 1 if we start the hailstone sequence from that particular n0. And I'm using not not to make clear that this is simply a test. We only care about one solution. We don't care about how many times we reach one, but only once is enough. And we don't create any additional bindings. So I'm using simply not not to make clear. I don't care about the bindings. 
I don't care about redundant solutions, I only care about whether we reach one. And as solutions we get one, two, three, four, five and so on. And this tells us that for each of these concrete integers we in fact do reach one. And this is of course not a proof of the Collatz conjecture. But if for example you notice that the computation uh, hangs, then it may be an indication of a counterexample and if you're lucky maybe you can try this with some integer and later prove that this integer for example goes into a different loop that never reaches one. So good luck. As the last point we have a small note about efficiency. Notice this interaction. Collatz next 3n yields n is 10 and that's fine. But on the other hand, for a different integer, say 10, Collatz next 10 and n yields n is 5, but then the query leaves a so-called choice point. So we had to backtrack and only on backtracking does the system say, no, there are no other solutions. And you can eliminate this choice point with a predicate called if underscore. And I show you here just a slight variation, so a slightly different implementation of Collard's next. Here I'm using if underscore to retain the predicate's generality and at the same time avoid this choice point. So this is one way you can write Collard's next to avoid this issue. And the query above is now deterministic. So if we ask now Collard's next 10 and n, we get n is 5. And it's clear now that there are no further solutions. And for more information about if underscore, check out the publication Indexing Diff by Ulrich Neumerkel and Stefan Kral.